Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon Sr. And this is the EC Show coming to you from sunny South Florida. As always, I have my family here, the face of the franchise, Inesia Cologne, also being joined by David Pinto. This is basically a production completely and utterly shot by us, as young EJ is still in the Dominican Republic. By the time this airs, we, we, we literally will have him back already. Right. Missing is Mr. Swagger McDougan's About That Life, Joseph Budo. Joseph, it's uh, his second daughter's birthday. So happy birthday to Moosh. Happy birthday, Melania. Happy birthday. Um, a lot to talk about. We're going out of the country uh, to go pick up EJ in the Dominican Republic. David is going to Brazil. He's going there for 10 days. Well, two weeks. It's two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And then, coincidentally, as I'm leaving, or as we're leaving from Dominican Republic, Joe's going to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> so Joe will be at the Nickelodeon Resort out in Punta Cana with his whole family. They go squatted deep. I don't even know how many people are going to be there, but it's going to be a lot. I was trying to figure out a way to meet him there that day. But it's not going to work out at all. There's no chance in hell that's going to work out. Um, as always, this show is sponsored by Katie Power Greens. Katie Power Greens is our urban uh, microgreens farm that uh, literally provides microgreens to the community. You know, basil, broccoli, cilantro, peas, radish. Spicy, spicy mix. mix. Spicy, spicy mix is my new favorite. <laughs> I didn't even know how many things are inside a spicy mix. I just found out the other day. Uh, we had our second open farm. Yeah, just recently and it was it was really nice it was a lot of fun uh so thankful and so appreciative to people that came the people that didn't yes. you'll have Thank another you. opportunity our next open farm is actually july 30th sunday july 30th book your appointments from now on in and don't ever forget you can always get your merch all your merch at inasiacolon.com that's e-n-a-s-i-a-c-o-l-o-n.com i actually had a couple of phone calls today discussing where exactly we want to take all of this? There's so much stuff in the works. I got so much that's that's like I'm all over the place with things and ideas and things are just emotion. Nature, you you can elaborate on it and just tell a little bit. Don't tell too much because we don't want to give the audience too much. But you hear me on these phone calls. Mm -hmm. You hear me having these discussions. Like yeah. it, it's it's something different, obviously. Um, as being in the meetings or being a part of it, I think it's actually pretty cool. Because, uh, like you said in a meeting three years ago, if we look back on what we were doing then till now, you wouldn't really expect all this to be happening. But Sorry. Go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> but, no, I'm excited for what's coming up in the future. You guys are definitely in for a lot of new stuff. It's going to be amazing, and we're going to bring you guys along with it like we always do. Yeah, I mean, there, so here's the thing. In one of the meetings, and I'll discuss it, and shout out to Mike because Mike was in the meeting. Um and one of the meetings, it was like, yeah, he did mention that three years ago we weren't where we are right now, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to be three years from now, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to plant those seeds. Even if the seeds don't necessarily grow the right way, at least you know how not to do it the next time. And then right. you, you figure out what works and what doesn't work, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, with Katie Power Greens, dude, the story of Katie Power Greens alone and how it came from its infancy to where it is today is remarkable. Hilarious. I mean, hilarious <laughs> to us, but remarkable to the fact that something that David thought of mm -hmm. to be able to have and enjoy with his kids is now providing nutrients yeah. to, to people, people, to other people, like in all seriousness. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's amazing because, you know, actually no one thinks of it that way mm -hmm. at first, you know, you're like, right. ah, this is my hobby or whatever mm -hmm. until you get the motor running and you put gas in the car and all of a sudden now the car's taking off. Yeah. And everything gets in motion and all of a sudden this person's telling this person and this person wants to know what's going on and this person contacts you and you're like, yo, they're buying and eating and feeding their families with our products. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's it's amazing to see that all take place. Now there's different levels to this. And I promise you, I've already been on some phone calls preliminary that just will literally just skyrocket this to the next level if mm -hmm. you do it the right way. Right. So that's what's coming up in the near future with pretty much almost everything we do. We have to plant the seeds. We have to create it. We have to be the content. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we have products. Like, for example, I, she's my daughter, but I hate to say this. But Inasia is our first client on everything. Everything. The merch, 
the 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 mic the marketing the she's literally the the base of everything right. and then everything else pretty much just falls so she's kind of like mm-hmm. the tip of the umbrella and then when you open the umbrella it opens up to all these other things that end up being underneath it you know and there's so many different people that are involved right. you know you got myself you got joe you got david you got ej you got you know mm-hmm. you got mint print you got you know you got so many other people that revolve around what we're trying to do and what we're trying to end up uh, end up going the end result of it, you know, yeah. like oh, drip Toronto and that side and all what they do and the things yeah. that they do, you know. Mm-hmm. There's so many other different things, so many avenues that we can all explore and be able to do this. Even the the thoughts, the conversation that David and I have, and I have a lot more conversations with David than David would like me to have with him on a daily <laughs> basis because it's just it's just a thing. Like if I'm doing something, I rather just speak to him and tell him than actually text him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And David's rather busy. He's busy like all day long. He's like, yo, dude, like we spoke six times today. And I'm like, it's just easier this way for me. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, I get it. But it does it does get tough because I'm I'm on the phone like all day. And I and I'm a type of person that hates to be on the phone. <laughs> but it comes it's my day job, I have to be on the phone, so it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're so excited because there's so much stuff that's coming out soon. I mean Content creation is not an issue. If you could pay me to just create content for 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 other businesses or other entrepreneurs or other whatever, I would make a killing because I could turn any little thing into... We were at the farm the other day and he was asking me, he's like, yo, why do you have me holding this camera? Like, we're finished for the day. And I'm like, oh, I was going to do something where me and you just talk on the drive away from here. Like, my mind is mm-hmm. always running, like always, like yeah. to the point where it's like, you know, people are like, oh, you have a camera in your face. I don't even pay attention to it. I know it's there, but I'm not paying attention to it. I'm just literally just going about doing what I'm supposed to do. Uh, yeah, 100%. That's how I feel when I'm, like, playing or practicing and, like, people are videoing or there's, like, people watching it. Just, like, tune them out and I don't even really pay attention. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It, it's just, you got to, like, almost kind of, like, see past them. Mm-hmm. Like they don't exist, right. almost right. in a sense. Yeah, hundred percent. So, are you ready for your trip? Yeah, I am. I've been dying to go there and just re- try to relax with the family. The kids are excited. They've been wanting to go for so long. It's been a long time since they've gone. So Please make them eat food. They will. No food. Like food. they eat food. You you have a thing. Like my kids don't eat. They no. Eat, they I eat went to so, so this is a true story. So I went to his house the other day and I met his father-in-law and I met his father's wife right yeah father-in-law's wife sorry father-in-law's wife and i met your brother-in-law as well mm-hmm. shout out to all of them thank you for the shrimp it was absolutely delicious thank you i appreciate it they make making ceviche and i'm sitting there saying oh shit i'm, I'm gonna tear this shit up mm-hmm. right but then i had to take david all the way to pompano and i'm like fuck i'm not gonna tear this shit up because we gotta go to pompano right mm-hmm. yeah so i tell david go david save me so david got back and was like yo there was nothing left i was like what the like a little container filled with ceviche but, and I'm like I want more but like, it's done I'm like, but the thing is is the reason why I brought what I brought up is because David they were making ceviche and they had a whole chicken there and I'm like yeah. what's the whole chicken for oh the kids why oh but it's a whole like, chicken do they no like they don't some... like ceviche so. uh-huh. uh, I, mean, I don't, I don't like, like it man too, it eventually they'll like it I never I if I was a kid at David's age or even as a teenager, I would not eat ceviche. Homie, there is no Chick Fil A. There is no whatever yeah, out there. I know. They're gonna, they're gonna go out there. there. They're they gonna eat it. it. They're gonna eat That's it. That's fine. I understand. So then you just have to apply the same thing when you come back here. Yeah, but if they don't like it, they're not gonna eat it. And I listen. I give them time because I I was that way. I would not eat ceviche at their age. I wouldn't eat ceviche if I was a teenager. <laughs> now I love ceviche, so it's. Everybody's palate changes every seven years. Your right. palate always changes, so yeah. mm-hmm. they'll get there. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not just, you know, obviously we're not buying McDonald's for them every single day or stuff like that. You know, right. they eat good. Right. But some things they just can't, no matter how much we try to force it. Right. It is what it is. So what did you think about the first event? I mean, obviously, your, your first event. Yeah, was it was so good. Uh, I thought it was good. Um I enjoyed meeting some of these, uh, some of our uh, customers, and explaining. A couple of them had a lot of questions, which was fine. We explained it. It was nice to have uh, Gavin there. Gavin too. Shout also, out to Gavin yeah, from Twelve Nine Farms. Appreciate you, Gavin. Um, which was good because he 
actually gave us some insight on what we can use some of the stuff for that I didn't even think of, you know? So um, it's really interesting. It was really interesting to see a lot of the people and have that. It's fun. It's fun. Speaking of um, new things, I did, I do remember a client, I think it was Audrey. Aubrey. Aubrey, Aubrey sorry. Aubrey, she had like a list of like. Oh, she texted me yesterday. Had. She texted me Is yesterday. It <laughs> Is it possible to grow like fruit? Yo! No. So, I mean, not that I've heard of. But Margarine Fruit. She sent me a list. He's like, can I grow this, 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 this? And I was like, some of that stuff you can. Like lavender and mint. That's like possible. Mm, no. Maybe mint. But not. Lavender, I highly. I'm just asking because I want to know. Not because. But I, her list just no, reminded me no. of. Lavender, no. Like, there's, she sent me We. We're going to have an R&D department eventually. It's going to be a research and development department okay. eventually. So, R&D will literally take some of those things that we need mm -hmm. to test and try out mm -hmm. and certain finances will be pushed to that to mm -hmm. see whether or not we can plant like i said earlier plant those seeds to see if we can get this stuff to work you because i'll that. be honest with you, from a business side if there's a market for it mm -hmm. i'm going to try to do it yeah you said that you get like the seeds from like online or something like that yeah yeah there's a specific website that sells the seed so we know exactly where it comes they're a very reputable company and I found out this weekend we can use the word organic. So all of our yeah. shit is organic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that because I thought that we couldn't guarantee where it was coming from, that they were getting it. Well, technically, we can't say it's 100% organic because we got to get it certified. It's a whole certification process. Well, our seeds are organic. Yeah, our seeds mm -hmm. are organic. Yeah, so see? Yeah. So then that means if our seeds are organic, then our plants are organic. But technically, like, we can't put it, like... A, on our labels not yet it's yeah. right, yeah. right, right. until we get that 100 percent certification right. yeah approval mm -hmm. thing whatever it's a pain in the butt but we'll so what did you we'll think about there. the list when you first saw it no i just it wasn't a, it wasn't too long of a list and i read through it and i was like yeah we can do some of that stuff but some because they're seed but we don't have the seeds right now just because we don't grow it right 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 um like wheatgrass and what was the other one she had another one too but like wheatgrass is more yeah. like specific. Like we would have to sell you a whole tray. We're not gonna grow it and then wheatgrass, cut it because wheatgrass you technically kale, can't just cut and lavender, then sell. You gotta cut it and use kale, it right away. Cauliflower. Speak up. Speak up. Um, wheatgrass, kale, lavender, kale, chia, yes. cauliflower, hearts of palm, and then leeks. I have leeks, leeks, and wheatgrass. What's I know that? that they have seeds. I don't really know, but I know they have the seed because oh, I read up on it. Yeah. Okay. But most of the other stuff, no. I oh, we're see. working on it. We're gonna get our R and D yeah. department on it. I promise you, we're working on it. Yeah. But in all actuality, I'll be honest with you. We've done, I don't know how many shows already on here. I think it's like 16, 17. This is seventeen. Seventeen plus the pilot, so eighteen shows. Mm -hmm. We've done eighteen shows since the beginning of January in this location here, mm -hmm. and. I kid you not, David was the most comfortable at the farm I've ever seen him than on any other show that we've ever had. Well, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable. Other than the show that his dad was on, obviously, because dad was on. Uh, I actually wasn't comfortable on that show. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in the farm, being able to explain the greens and teaching people and telling people on blah, well, blah, 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 he was all into it, all insane. into it. I turned into like a salesman. I was like, yo, you getting a subscription or not? What's up? Like, like. I was just That's focused. Good. I was so focused on the task at hand, and David was just being Mr. Super, Super, Super Informative. And then obviously Gavin helped out because whatever we didn't know, mm -hmm. we were able to buff off to Gavin. Yeah. And Gavin was the able. Gavin knows a lot because he's a chef. He's actually used these things in food, and and he's like a high end type of chef. He's not like, you know, just cooking eggs and bacon in the morning type of chef. You know, yeah. he's really. He's worked with real chefs out there. He's like worked yeah, a lot. He's the, he's the motherfucker making you a souffle. Yeah. Some shit so like he, that. he's used a lot of these microgreens in his foods and like specialty foods that we don't even think of. So he knows, mm -hmm. which was nice. That's why I liked him being there because he actually gave us a lot more information than I even had. So today, true story. And Angel will tell you, true fucking story. Today, I gave a sample out to somebody and I told him. And I told him exactly what to do with it. I said, yo, just add some cucumbers, chop up some tomatoes, throw it in the salad, put some dressing on it, <laughs> swallow it. He sent me a picture. He said, that shit was fire. No joke. No one's, or in this, especially in this area, no one is going to be able to beat the freshness and the quality of our greens. Period. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. It's not going to happen. And no, 
We do not grow fucking weed. Stop <laughs> asking me if we grow weed. Whenever we talk about it, people will, like automatically assume that it's like. Yeah, I know. Especially like when we say we call it the farm, you know, like they think it's code name, but it's not. It's it's microgreens, it's yeah, vegetables. And seriously, stuff, like, like they, I, I kid you not. Yo, you growing weed? I even thought of a joke asking Asia. I was like, yo. We should just fucking say it's weed. We should, yeah. say, yeah. We we should, should. call. We should, should just call it weed, or we should call it the weed package, or whatever it may be. Because everybody, that's what somewhere. everybody thinks it is. <laughs> no, literally, but uh, like even my friends think the same thing, and I'm just like, no, guys. Like, no, I'm yeah, wrong. I have cop friends that are like, are you guys going to review? I'm like, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> retarded. Dude, yeah, it's stupid. He's like, it's a cover for your weed. I was like, no, dude. Like, so I'm looking forward to the event on the 30th. Obviously. It's going to be the first time that I actually have to plant everything myself. You'll be gone. Mm -hmm. EJ will be here, so maybe EJ will help me. But mm -hmm. normally David does a lot of the bulk work when it comes to planting the, the, the plants and stuff like that, the microgreens. Mm -hmm. And then we, him and I go back and forth, him predominantly more than me, but we go back and forth and taking care of them. Like right. He's very, very quote-unquote anal about it like you know what i'm saying like i remember one day in asia and i in asia and i went there one day just to water and david just shows up like yo what the fuck are you doing here the like, no, guy had to come do this well yeah no i did i had i had the seat soaking uh, and when you call me say hey i'm gonna go i'm like all right cool i get to chill and then i was like fuck i have the seat soaking let me go do it and so i was like all right i'm gonna go yeah. real quick and it wasn't even me just getting like making sure you guys were doing anything no it was nothing like that it was just because i remember that i had that but yeah i i am a little bit anal which is not a bad it. thing no, no it's just course. like i have it like the way i like doing things like that's why i even like say to you i'm like hey i, I like to be there by my, like i literally like to be there by myself my daughter's usually with me now now because of summer but dude she's a seller and I, she I, is the, she was absolutely amazing at the event yeah, it is. took her a little while and she was talking yeah. about it for a week straight but she, she like, was when's amazing the event again? when's the event she I'm was like, amazing she was absolutely yeah. amazing she was oh she was perfect like, she enjoyed seriously. it yeah she had fun That's she had good. a good time yeah she likes going there every morning and watering if first thing in the morning she's like we're going to the farm first right i'm like yes and so she She's super excited to be there and help me out, which is great. And she doesn't get in my way or anything. So. We gave uh, Doug and I forgot the other guy's name. We gave them some sunflower the other day when we stopped by. I gotta cut. I gotta give them some samples because we got some stuff left over. So no, no, no. We'll figure it out. Just don't give them anything else other than sunflower. Just keep giving me the samples and right. off the samples to other people because the samples are actually doing well. But anyway, back to what I was saying earlier. We had gave them some sunflower. The reason why we had stopped by is because Asia and I were. Like we were right across the street mm -hmm. and we went to Publix and we had a pub sub. Shout out to Publix and their pub sub. Everybody knows Publix down here. Pub subs are amazing. Mm -hmm. But I had to tell Publix, hold the greens. Because when you got your own fucking greens, you don't mm -hmm. need For them, right? Greens. So we, in Asia and I, went, clipped some spicy fucking mix, threw it on top of a fucking sandwich and called there it a day. Go. It was amazing. Absolutely Oops. delicious. I promise you, if you do it, I you will not regret it. You will not fucking regret it at all. Um, you have been promoting the shit out of this movie. Yeah. And please uh, tell everybody Freedom. about it. So, yeah, I've been a big promoter. I have nothing to do with the movie at all, but I've just been pushing it out there. Uh, it's called Sound of Freedom. Uh, Jim Caviezel, I hope I said his name right. I always butcher it. Um, he's the main actor in it. He's been pushing it. Um, Is it Mel Gibson's movie? That's where I'm not 100%. A lot of people keep saying hey, it's Mel Gibson's movie. I was like, uh, it's Jim Caviezel's. Technically, it's his movie, but I think Mel Gibson like is was helped, had a helping hand in pushing it out because this movie was filmed five years ago. Mm -hmm. mm. And they've been trying to release it, but they've been getting pushback. Even, I think they even offers, offered it to Prime, Amazon Prime, and to Netflix just so they can put it on their streaming network mm -hmm. and they refused it. They outright refused the movie and everything. So I think Mel Gibson has a hand in actually getting it released, but it, it it's a very somewhat low budget film compared to most films that are out there. So they didn't have much money to market it. They've mm -hmm. kind of been doing their own market and relying on other people's word of mouth. So I kind of Word of mouth is the best advertisement in the world. It is. It is. Say, first off, it don't cost you a fucking dollar. That's the first thing. Well, that's how yeah. Tesla survived for most of their years. They don't do any And the second thing is, yeah, word of mouth is the best advertisement because it comes from the actual consumers. Right. Mm -hmm. 100%. And and that's where like 
Like, I started doing a lot of advertising for this movie. Obviously, you guys have seen me do it on yeah. Instagram and stuff. And it's funny because, like, I did it and I just kept doing it. And I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm probably annoying the shit out of all my friends or whatever. But, like, now, after the movie's been out, I've slowly been seeing some of the people I that are friends of mine on Instagram or just follow me on Instagram. They're reposting saying, go watch this movie. So, I don't know if I had an impact on them actually going out to watch it, but it makes me feel like good because maybe maybe it it was me that convinced them to go. And and a lot more people do need to watch it. So tell us what the movie's about. Yeah, so so the movie's about uh, basically child trafficking that goes on around the world. Um, I'm not going to give spoilers. He's an idiot. I would give you so many fucking... I would tell you the whole movie because then you want to go see it because I'm only telling you from my point of view. There's no, I mean, it's ch- child trafficking. It, it's it's the story of, um, I'm forgetting his name. And shout out to Christine Kane. Christine Kane does a lot of um, stuff for Church by the Glades and Pastor David and mm-hmm. his wife, Lisa. Christine Kane actually is a big, big, huge, just big following news foundation about the whole human trafficking stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Amazing. That's Amazing a, it's a, it's a big thing that, that's that's been going on for a long time. And now I think there's a lot more awareness for it and this is actually the perfect time for this movie because there are more people picking up on what's going on around the world with child um trafficking. Tra- child trafficking and all that so just watch it it's it, you got to become aware don't don't just be oblivious to the, to everything and just think the world is perfect and all that and everybody's fine no it's not it's the world is a lot dirtier and messier and Thank evil you. than people think you know mm-hmm. and Kids need help. These kids have no future if people aren't out there helping. Um, I keep forgetting the guy, the main guy's name from the movie that actually this movie's based off. Now, there is a part in the movie when I saw it, I was like, that didn't fucking happen. I, I know for a fact that shit did not happen. So they Hollywood did. Because that guy would not be fucking alive today. So, they, ho- so they, ho- yeah. they, they Hollywood So they had it. And, and then after I watched the film, I... Con- it conveniently showed on uh, I think it was on TikTok I saw it where they were talking about that specific scene Art. in yeah. the movie and they're like and he talked the, the actual guy again I'm blanking on his name that the movie's about mentions he's like no that didn't happen they just added that in which it does add a, th- a thriller like action part to the film so the movie but it's exaggerated yeah it's it's exaggerated what happened didn't happen mm-hmm. as far as that that specific scene Okay. So, but the movie, even taking out the whole, you know, I don't want to watch child trafficking. The film itself is phenomenal. It's very well filmed. Cinematically, it's great. The actors in it, even take away Jim Cav- Caviezel, who's played Jesus Christ <laughs> and the Passion of Christ. Take him out of the movie. Everybody else in the film is fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They are amazing actors. Even the one guy he uh, who he teams up with, he meets in Colombia. Dude, that guy, there's a scene that he tells a story of what basically he was part of um, the drug cartel in Colombia. Went to jail, never snitched on anybody, got out. They kind of gave him his job back mm-hmm. because he showed he was loyal and all this stuff. And then he had a moment in his life, which he explains that and tells the story in the film that made him want to switch his, you know, turn a leaf and get out of that world. And man, when he's telling you that story, and it has to do with human trafficking, Mm -hmm. it is just, like, you watching that guy, you're like, fuck, like, you can feel it. Like, it feels like that was the actual, like, person telling the story. It was, like, shout out to everybody, the director, all the actors in that film. I think the weakest actor, again, it's not his fault, is probably the little boy in the film. <laughs> but he's, you know, little kids. But he's little. But other than that, like, even when he has his moments where the film is, like, looking, like, focuses on him, and obviously he's supposed to show kind of somewhat of, of a fear emotion, even when when it shows him, you still feel it in him. You mm-hmm. still, it's still, you still feel the fear. So go watch so the movie. Good. Go watch the movie. Definitely go watch the movie. Support it. You know, post it. Try to get more people. There's free tickets out there. Buy a ticket for somebody. Whatever. Just spread the word. Mm-hmm. So this weekend we also had a chance um, to go to Top Golf, mm-hmm. and we all hung out for Ron's birthday. Shout yeah. out to Ron. Happy Shout birthday, to Ron! Happy birthday, Ron and Shannon. Mm-hmm. Shannon put it together. Ron had no idea. Um, mm-hmm. So until he saw everybody running, right? Of course, right when he pulled up. I came up late, so yeah. it didn't matter. But it was myself and Inasia actually went to Top Golf and met all you guys over there. 
And this fucking girl is fucking phenomenal at everything yeah, that has to do with fucking superstar. It's fucking her. ridiculous, yo. She picks up a fucking golf club. It doesn't and even sudden, does it, like she doesn't even stand th- the way a golfer does, and she fucking hits that thing. Yeah, it yeah it it's goes crazy. Far, it goes dude. far. It's, and it's fucking insane. It's just like yo, like. The only thing I can sit there and say is like, yo, she came out of my nuts. That's the yeah. only fucking credit I can you take. That, like, because she just, it, it, it's, it's a proud moment. He me. sees how, uh, you know, competitive yeah. you can be in anything, not just in soccer. Oh, yeah. You know, so, and that's the thing. And that's, and listen, that's something I, I you know, Ron's my best friend. You know, me and him are literally like brothers. Mm-hmm. We, we grew up basically in each other's family, house, the household. And Ron's the same way. He's a very competitive person. He's always been that way. And every fucking thing he puts his hands on, he's fucking good at it. Mm-hmm. And you are exactly That's why the same way. He needs to come play pickleball. Oh, oh I didn't even speak about that. Yeah, no. Uh, you can't. You're not editing this, but if you were, we would insert it here. He sends us a video yesterday. Yo, a fish tank. fucking fish tank, dude. Pickleballing, putting it in between his legs. This, that, and third. We still can't get him to come out. Though. No, he's I keep like, telling him, but he's like. I told him, it's like, listen, they go after the podcast. Why don't you come for a podcast? And then we go after. Mm-hmm. Or just meet us after. He's like, dude, I'm in bed at 7. Or some shit like that. And I'm like, fucking great I was like, listen, I like to go to bed early, but sometimes I'll fucking stay a little bit late. And you know, late for me is not e- it's like 9 o'clock. It's not even that late. So, <laughs> so he puts his phone on silent, so that's why I know not even the text. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so after the Top Golf. We ended up going to a friend's house of theirs in Margate oh, yeah. or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And we went there. And these drunken idiots, they started doing fucking Mario Kart fucking TikToks in the living yeah, room. I so, saw that. That yeah. shit was hilarious, so, yo. That was funny. They were all basically drunk. And so they had this big ring light. So I was holding They were drunk the at, go- at the golf course. Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah. And it then I was, wasn't at the house. I was holding <laughs> the phone. And like I guess the game was like the shots were in front. And then they were all back, and they all had, like, um, bowls on their head. Yeah, they were on their head, and they were holding, like, a plastic plate. And, like, you know, like, the Mario sign was like, right. brr, brr. they were doing that. And once it went off, they had to, like, scoot to go, like, to get, get their drinks. shot. Yeah. None of them scooted. They all scooted they twice and dove yeah, to get like it. That. But it was funny. And then we ended up, uh, after that, we ended up playing Uno. Yeah, we ended up playing I fucking know. Uno. I know. I saw somebody Who had, it. Oh, um. Shannon, heck, Shannon, yo, dude, Shannon got raped. Sorry, Shannon, no, love you. No, the first, the first round, she did. She was right next to me. She yo, got, draw twenty. Yeah, she had to draw twenty. She, she had her deck, threw it on the table, walked away. We, I won the first I've seen game, people and come then back she from came that, back. Though. I've seen people come back from that. She wasn't coming back from that. She, there was no way. Dude, I kid you not. Dude, I'm draw four, you right then now. draw four. What's the color? Blue. Draw fucking four, two more. It was it blue. Is it? Put a draw four on top of that. It was like yo. But you. the thing is, I what I don't understand is these Uno games with these random ass cards. Shift hands. Oh, switch hands, switch hands, but, switch hands. Yeah, but that's what makes the like I said last show. I don't. Were you here? You were I here was, last show, right? Yeah. Right. Well, like I said, we always. My family and I used to do it almost like religiously every other week or whatever with mm-hmm. our, our other friends. And we, I would all purposely go to like Target or Walmart and look for like a new style of Uno mm-hmm. just to fuck with them yeah. and bring it and we'd play it and it would fuck everybody up, but it would be fun. It was still enjoyable. No, we all, I think he had one card. The guy next to him had one. Um, the was switch. Brittany, Brittany, Brittany that had, one is the switch card Brittany had somebody like else. 10. What was the other guy? No, she switched the whole table. She switched the whole table. She didn't just switch cards with somebody else. She no, switched the whole table. Switched she switched the whole table. Just Pretty, you cheated. She didn't switch no cards See, but either. everybody has their own rules. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I don't know. That was funny. And, and I was like, what? And then, shout out to Pat. Pat's like, you yeah, not going anywhere. I said, yeah, I'm leaving at 12. He's like, dude, I ordered $150 worth of Taco Bell. Sounds like Pat. <laughs> Sounds he's like Pat. Like, shout out, Pat. He's like, That's all right. Dude, the one person that if you bring them... And you are ready to have a part. Pat will do anything to keep everybody there. Dude. He'll be the first one to get shots, get everybody fucked up, get, keep the party going. Which, listen, I'm all for because when I was a teenager, I used to like doing that shit. And now I'm fucking too tired to do it. <laughs> That's why I wasn't there. But if you guys would have told me Uno, then I probably would have. <laughs> I would have got a rebel on the way home and showed up there. So. Yeah. But I had a fucking flat tire. Yeah, unfortunately, you told us yeah. afterwards. You had fucked up your night, right? Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's it was like... Uh, Tessie? Yeah, so I don't oh. have a car. Right. Well, um, so I ended up getting a flat that night, or else I would have tried to show it up if I found out there was Uno. <laughs> but unfortunately, yeah, I got a shitty, a shitty situation. I 
got a flat bed my rim got it I have to get a new tire, rim, everything, but my insurance is taking care of it and all that. So. I always thought Elon Musk shows up on your screen. No. Like when you, something bad laugh. goes wrong when you're in your test. No, I, I would laugh if that would happen. Like, could I you wish. imagine if like a tweet came along, your fucking tire is fucked. No, <laughs> like, no, no, but, but literally my uh, pressure, my air pressure in the tires, I immediately pressed it as soon as I ran over it. To see if I ran, because if I felt it, I knew right away. I told my wife, I was like, "We got a fucking flat." So I pressed the button to check the air pressure. It went from thirty-two to twelve like that. It was like so quick, and I was like, "Fuck!" So I pulled in there, literally the Walmart that was right there, and I was just yelling at the world, cussing the whole, cussing everybody. Which and tire was it? Was it? Uh, the front driver's side. Ooh. Yeah, it was, and it, it's black, and the road was the road's black. It's dark. It wasn't even like in an area that had. Like, uh, the street lights yeah. and it was a little wet because of the rain so right like literally when i saw it i was already on top of it i even tried to go a little bit off but it hit the edge of the, the tire and it still slashed it so did you get a response from the city or no? um i called them uh the city she said hey just send me your photos email me all your photos we'll send you like a clean form once we see that it's you know related to us which i don't see how it can't be um so we'll see i still haven't got an email back like we emailed them yesterday so we'll, we'll see <laughs> you ain't getting shit <laughs> you ain't getting they shit. the lady was really nice actually on the phone she's like yeah that sounds like a, like an issue that um we should handle I'll, I'll send you over to claims and i spoke to the claims lady and she's like yeah just email and they were super nice i was i was really surprised they were very very nice on the phone um so, but she's like, yeah, I'll look over, I'll review it, and then I'll send you a claim form. I'm like, all right, cool. So if, if I don't hear anything by Friday, I'll call them back and see what's going on. Yeah. So you have a, how long is your flight? So the flight, normally a straight flight from Miami to Rio is about eight to nine hours. My flight's going to be 11 because I'm stopping in Panama. Fuck! Two hour layover and then going to Rio. So. That's a lot, dude. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm used to it. I've done it my whole life, so... That's why when people are like, oh, California's far as shit, I was like, no, it's, it's not. not. Dude, I have, to have like, and I, and I kid you not, mind you, this is going to be 20 years of marriage this year coming up in October. And I had that like kind of like drop seats the whole past two weeks on trying to convince my wife that taking a nonstop flight from Fort Lauderdale to Dominican Republic was not the best idea from a financial standpoint for our family, right? So let me break this down real quick. Nonstop from Fort Lauderdale to Dominican Republic, right? Just for Wendy and Inasia alone, it was going to cost $1,100 without them choosing their seats still. I still had to book my flight to go there because I already have a return for EJ and I. Right. So I don't have to book returns. So I only have to book going there and I have to book their flight. Now, Frontier, which is kind of like the spirit, right? Will literally get you from for from Miami, sorry, to San Juan, Puerto Rico, one stop, and then to Dominican Republic. It's seven hundred dollars for all three of us to get on that flight. That's a deal. Exactly. My point. But when you're trying to explain that to a woman that doesn't even like to get on airplanes anyway, mm. right, in the first place, it's difficult. So I tell her she already doesn't want to go, so she wants to be comfortable. And then she doesn't want to get off, and then don't. Yeah. So the problem is, is I'm like, I'm trying to, babe. You know, it's uh financially beneficial for our family, right? Because it makes sense with the money that we end up saving, we can apply to hotel stay or whatever right, else that right. we do. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. A big savings. So I try to tell her this, right? And these are this is the th the parts of marriage is like sometimes being right. It's not worth it. <laughs> it really isn't. So I'm sitting there. She just cooked. I'm adding some of our microgreens on top of what she just cooked. Oh, no. Sorry. You cooked. I apologize. Yeah. Inasia cooked that day. I apologize. Yeah. Inasia cooked that day. I'm adding some of the microgreens on top of it. And I'm like, did you look at the price? Because I'm actually bringing up that we need to book the flights. We need to go. And she tells me. It's more expensive now on Frontier, so it's not, like, worth it, basically. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you sure? She's like, yeah, did you look? I'm like, 
are you sure? Because I know that I looked. So sure enough, I end up looking. And when I look, it's exactly what I said it was going to be. <laughs> and at that moment, it was like, it wasn't even worth being right anymore. It was, it was not even worth being right anymore. Because it was just like the death stare and angry and pissed off. And I'm just sitting there saying, but this makes, in my head, right. this makes sense for us yeah, financially. I get it, I get it. I get it. See, my, my wife's the complete opposite. So this flight that we actually got, I've never been on. Mm-hmm. I've never even been on this airline. It's a Brazilian airline, but I've never stopped in Panama. That's new for me. Usually if, I, if I'm going to stop somewhere, it stops in Sao Paulo, which we're already in Brazil, Brazil at that yeah. point, and then we go to Rio, mm-hmm. which still is like, it's basically a nine hour, 10 hour flight. We don't re- the layover is literally an hour. You've got to run to the next terminal and take all your shit. It's really quick. <laughs> Um, so she booked it because it was literally probably more than half of what we would regularly spend on a flight yeah. for all four of us. Less, less than half. Less, it's less. Um, yeah, I meant less, sorry. And I was like, but we're going, it's like, this is like the spirit of the Brazilian airlines. Like, it is, dude, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I, I do for a long flight. I, I, for I'm a gonna long flight. I'm going to tell you why I don't mind it. I don't mind it because, you know, actually, you're just getting me there. I will spend the yeah, money that yeah. I end up saving there. I, I don't I care. I fly all night. I don't that care. Sucks. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. Like, people be like, I, I've seen it firsthand. I kid you not. True story. My homie was trying to fly a girl from Michigan here. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And she, I, I promise you, she's like, there's no flights. There's no flights. There's no flights. Him and I both looked it up. There was a Spirit flight that was going to cost him three hundred bucks in comparison to the Delta flight that was almost seven hundred dollars. And she was like, "Yo, there's a Spirit flight." She's like, "I'm not getting on Spirit." That's exactly what she said. Like what? Like just get on the flight. The whole point is to get to the destination to be with the person. No, I agree. Listen, every time we go, like my wife and I go anywhere, she usually will book Spirit because it's the cheaper flight. Um, and I'll do the trip, but every time I'm done with that trip, I'm like, I'm never fucking flying spirit again. It fucking sucks. But then she finds it and it's still f- so fucking cheap. And I'm like, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> exactly. It is what it is. So like in this one, she's, but my wife, she also has a system where she does, she asks, but it was already, she already bought it. Basically. <laughs> she asked me after she swiped the credit card. No, I don't so know. it's like, I don't know. I'm not that stupid. I'm, I'm like. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, women can do things that we can't do in a relationship where it doesn't work, but where it works for them. So she does it. She's like, oh, here's the flight. Mind you, I was in Brazil when she was booking these flights with my dad already. Mm -hmm. She's sending me and I'm like, listen, I don't think we should do it because I don't, that airline from what I know is not the greatest and we're going to stop in Panama. Like Mm -hmm. I've noticed that doing business with him for the past couple months or whatever it may be. David is very, very pessimistic on certain things. Mm-hmm. He's very, very safe, super, super conservative. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm like, fuck it, let it roll. Let me take the, we take the risk. Like it doesn't matter. No, listen, I'm, I'm, I am. I, I, it's not like I won't take a risk. I'm always like, and you know, it's the same thing with my dad. My dad hates it because of this, the way I am. It's not that I won't take the risk. I just take into consideration all the risks <laughs> and put it and like to put it out there mm-hmm. so we're all aware yeah. that way if shit happens there's no like hey i told you or you should because my dad does that mm-hmm. my dad will be i won't i'll just sit back stay quiet like he'll meet somebody maybe he'll like start doing some kind of business or something or just not even business maybe just try to do like a friendship type of thing and help him out with this or whatever and I, like my wife says it, she's like, you have something about you where when you meet somebody, you just automatically know like somebody's good or something. And I was like, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I do. Mm-hmm. And I notice I do have that. When I run into somebody new, I mm-hmm. get vibes and I'm just like, but I always give people the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't mean I automatically shut that person out. I just, I kind of sit back more and just observe and see yeah. what happens. And that's happened with my dad where he does that. He, my dad's more open arms to everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? That shit was crazy. We were at the freaking... <laughs> He's open arms to everybody. We were at the event. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's me, David, and Gavin. Mm-hmm. And then Karim comes by. Karim is David's wife. Mm-hmm. A little bit, a couple minutes go by. She's like, who the fuck's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, my wife just hates everybody. She's like, yeah, she's who's just... that? Who's that? Mm-hmm. 
My <laughs> wife is like automatically like, yo, that's that person. Crazy. Thing. <laughs> and I'm like, relax, like, give them the benefit. Like I always tell, I was like, listen, I understand if you get weird vibes from people, but like always give people the benefit of the doubt. It might not end up being what you think. Mm-hmm. That's funny. And that's that's why like I sometimes I just sit back and wait and see what happens. And I've seen my dad literally do. That's how like open I said, arms open arms. Though, so you can't really yeah. Push. But my dad's like completely open arms with people. If he thinks there's something that can be done between the two to benefit both, not just obviously his side, he'll like open his arms and bring you in and make try to make it work. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm like, fuck, like I, I got a bad feeling about this person, but I don't say anything to him because mm-hmm. he doesn't like it when I say it. But then when shit fucking happens with that person and like, it's exactly what I was thinking about them, and I go, well, that's what I thought about it when I first met him. He's like, why the fuck didn't you tell me? <laughs> because if I tell you, you'd yell at me and say I'm negative. It's not me being negative. It's just like, I'm feeling. kind of like get feelings and I'm aware, I'm aware of some risks and I just like to put it out there. It's not that I'm not down. Like the whole thing of moving everything out of my house and getting an actual facility. It's not that like I was scared to do it. It was more like, hey, I want to make you aware like there's these risks this because we're signing and ah, go fuck. if you're there to go and do it hey i'm I'll with you like you said hey i'm ready to go i'm like all right cool, go fuck. the reason why i don't give a fuck is because here's the thing right let's and let's just be honest and for all the viewers that are watching out there hopefully this can motivate you if you're interested in doing something that you kind of think that you shouldn't be doing or whatever it may be if you really look back on the amount of money that you've spent over time on frivolous and stupid and nonsense stupidity in all your years and you add that all up i guarantee you could have started four fucking businesses and they all could have failed yeah but at least you tried so no actually for me mm-hmm. the way i look at it is even if you have money in the bank which is cool your money in the bank is doing absolutely nothing because the interest is right. collecting is dirt shit at least you take this money and you play with it and you try to make something bigger out of it if you fail fine no problem you fail that's part of it but now you know what not to do. Yes, it costs you money. Everything costs money in life. Oh, period. Yeah, 100%. There's nothing that's fucking free. Nothing that's free besides the cookies at Publix. But you have to be 12 and under. To yeah, get exactly. Those. <laughs> those are not free either. They, they, you end up paying for it when you go to the fucking line and you buy their groceries. Yeah, you when you buy like two bags of stuff and it's like 100 bucks versus going to like Walmart and you got like 80 bags so of stuff. So for me, I don't have a problem. Hey, let's make it happen. Let's do this. Let's do that. If it, if it makes sense, yeah, sure. You know, no, I agree. The the I, I agree 100%. If it's worth my saying. time. And it's going to help me make money to provide for my family. I'm with the shits. If it doesn't, so be it. Move on. Cut my losses. It is what it is. At least I tried. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. But no, no, no. And and I agree. And I I look at it the same. I look at things the same way. Again, I I do have, and it's, it's my, it's just my view of things and my, my issue, I guess, with taking into account all the risks with everything that could happen. Doesn't mean it stops me from doing a lot of things. I mean, I got, just, I got two more fucking cars that <laughs> shouldn't have died and I know the risks that can happen but you know I'm trying and, and it's true whatever any idea you have out there try it just make it work and it's like sometimes I have like talk to my wife and she will assess something that we're trying out and she's like oh it's not working it's not working I always tell her like give it time yeah like, it's not supposed to work like overnight right you know you got to put in some work you got to give it some time give it a few months in a few months, you see that it's taking too much time and there's nothing coming out of it. Maybe then evaluate it again and see, hey, should I still keep doing this? Like right. the 3D printing stuff. You knew last year or no, it was 2021. I was doing a lot of 3D printing stuff, making helmets. Beautiful making, logo. Beautiful was, logo. Yeah, making helmets, uh, painting them, designing them. And then I was starting to sell them. But I was seeing like the sale, like it, there wasn't that much profit for the amount of work I was putting in and the amount of time that I was losing from my family because I was literally going to work, coming home from work, and working, putting, again. And, working and putting so much time in these helmets. And I'm, I'm an artistic person. So like smallest thing on the fucking helmet bothered me. I'd have to start all over again. It's just more time I throw into it. And mm-hmm. then I'm selling it for like 250 bucks. It's not really worth it. It wasn't worth it. So I... I told my wife, like, my wife was very, uh, like, oh, you know, you just started doing this. I was like, yeah, but I'm, I want to, like, try to do something with this. I like doing it. It's artistic. I'm into it. But then I, a few months later, I assess, assess, assess it, uh, ugh, assessed it, assessed it all. And I was like, yeah, it's taking too much time away from my family with not enough, you know, profit at the end. It just what it wasn't making any sense. Right. So, you know, I still have my 3D printers, but now no, I just print things. Thing you 
I actually made something today. I made a. He needs to make a KD one. Power Green fucking I mean, logo. That's what you need dude, to make. That's a good. I, I, ah, oh my God. you see, this is why I'm here. No, this, you see, know what? He could be as artistic as he wants. But here's the thing: when I was starting, I was doing logos like nonstop. I did logos for my wife's panties. I did logos for my mom's chocolate thing. I was just doing it because I was just trying to learn how to do 3D models. And then once I kind of took my mind away from 3D printing, I just it literally the printer just sat off for a year i just didn't touch it i still have stuff the yours that i gotta fix i got stuff of another friends that i have to fix that he asked me to fix i have stuff of his that he asked me to like put together and paint and they're still there in pieces i haven't even put together because it's just it's very time consuming but now i'm like slowly getting back because my son's asking me to put, like uh print like little pokemon things and i, I print little trophies for my wife's kids at school oh. like she gives little trophies during the World Cup, like I printed little World Cup trophies that she gave out to because her school is filled with like Brazilians. Oh. So they love, her students love that. I think we should give Aubrey a very, very platinum membership, KD Power Green membership. Yeah, we can. <laughs> how long does that take? It just, just depends how big, how tall, and all that stuff. So, like, a small, like if I was to do a little small little logo, maybe 45 minutes to print. I mean, I got a design. It's not that hard. I could do a, a KD Power Greens one easy. It's not that difficult at all. Could you, like, do, like, a custom, like, Funko Pop and Asian thing? Um, that's a lot of work. Whoa, that know. would be dumb. I don't know. I don't Whoa, know. no, stop. Let's go back. EJ Funko Pop would be so perfect. <laughs> Yo, you gotta His make the head big. Head. His <laughs> big ass head. I, I can't, like, I don't know how to model that well. Like, I know how to model more flat things than anything. That makes sense. I tried starting to get into all that to make my own helmets, but then it was just, I, that's when everything I just shut down and I just gave up. So this it. episode and the next episode of Inasia's Couch with you and Rachel will be the last two episodes that you do live because Inasia mm -hmm. goes to Arizona after our trip from the Dominican Republic back to school. Mm-hmm. You have to go out there and you have to make that name for yourself. You have to go out there and you have to show all those motherfuckers in Pac-12 that you're going to bust their ass too. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing. Like, go out there. Go do your thing. Go score goals. Go make us proud. Have me yelling at the TV. <laughs> screaming at the TV. Yeah. You know, shout out to all of our Arizona peeps. We're going to see you again. Industrious Tempe. We're going to be back in that office August 1st. That's going to be back up and running too. Mm -hmm. I think, and I still need to figure it out. I was on a phone call today. How are we going to continue doing in Asia's couch, considering the fact that you will be in Arizona? Even though in our facility, our facility in Arizona is fully equipped mm -hmm. to do. It's actually full. It's better than here because it's fully equipped to have soundproof roof room, conference rooms. Mm -hmm. That's all types of shit for in Asia to be able to record where she can record. Okay. The key question is: is okay. How are we going to do it? So. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be, it's obviously going to be on maybe like Google Meets or some shit like that mm -hmm. to where Rachel and Asia can converse and then we just have to figure out what software we'll probably end up using to end up figuring out a way yeah. to have that on there. That's mm -hmm. what we have to do. Yeah. But that's going to conclude today's episode. Don't forget this episode is sponsored by Katie Power Greens, our locally South Florida urban farm here in Cold Springs, providing all types of greens to the communities and stuff like that. Uh, get all your merch at inasiacolon.com, E-N-A-S-I-A-C-O-L-O-N.com. And uh, we got to do shameless plugs. Shameless plugs. Let's go. Uh, Avion. Arizona Ice Tea. Arizona Auto Palmer. Uh, Apple. Funko Pops. Sony. Sony, Sony, Sony. Sony, Sony please Sony, Sony. fucking sponsor us. These <laughs> fucking cameras are not cheap. Hey, uh, but I would be down for Nike. Funkos. I love Funkos, too. It's Nike. <laughs> Legos and Legos. Yeah. I love fucking Legos, too. Appreciate you having <laughs> See you on the next episode. Thank Later. you.